Hey everybody, Jeff Dunham, how are you? Uh, in the shop, and for those of you joining us from uh, Facebook, welcome. You know a little bit about what I'm about to say for an introduction, but uh, we are in my shop uh, live along with Matt McNeil, my longtime friend, and uh, who edits all our videos, except for these, because these are live, you don't have to do crap. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah. And then, um, and then along with this new guy that I've been working on, and he's a little, the camera's a little closer to me, so he looks bigger, but uh, this is the new guy that I've been talking about and working on for a while here. And as you know, uh, may or may not know, he's the internet troll, and he is now doing what he uh, will be doing best, and that is this. There we go. Mm hmm. Don't know his new voice yet, but uh, I will work on that soon. Right, Matt? <clears throat> yeah. Well, I, I mean, I think we, I yeah, think we know his voice. Were, I, I've hinted at his were, voice. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how much you want to give that, of, of that away at this point. Yeah. And this is so great because you can, you know, again, as I pointed out on, on Facebook uh, Live just a few minutes ago, this typing is just a device. I've equated it to George Burns' cigar. Uh, the, the punchline was not the cigar, but he would tell, do a set up a joke, tell the punchline, then he'd put the cigar in his mouth and you knew that's when you were supposed to laugh. So again, this, uh, typing on his cell phone is definitely some sort of device that I will use in the show. So many people can identify with it. Uh, you know, everybody's, uh, distracted by their cell phones in the middle of the show or the middle of the videos. He's definitely going to be, uh, you know, texting, right, Matt? Absolutely. And actually, you know, it, it brings up the question here. Um, did, have you ever worked with George Burns? Yes, did I have. Thank you, Matt. Him? I have. I've opened, I opened for George Burns, uh, obviously, years ago, uh, a few years before he died. And uh, it was amazing. Here was this, uh, this little old guy that would just shuffle on stage. You think, how can this old man do this? Then the lights would, spotlight would come on, the mic would be turned up, and this guy came to life. But um, anyway... So uh, what are we going to do today, Matt? We're going to actually answer questions, and I'm also going to show folks a little bit about how I, um, how I um, uh, work on this guy. I'm going to do a little fiberglassing because his arm's here. I had to put some mechanisms in there, and I want to make sure that the, the clothes fit. I don't know. Matt, I, I might do the fiberglass. I might not. The only reason to do it is if he has on a short sleeve, I might want to add a little fiberglass here. To, uh, to give the arm some length so he can have a, a shorter sleeve. Otherwise, you're going to see all the mechanics and the, you know just his arm, his Pinocchio. I call him Pinocchio arms because I've never built wooden arms on a dummy before. But since he's, you know, Walter has his arms permanently crossed, this guy's going to have his arms permanently in texting. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you do fiberglass on those arms, will it make it more difficult to get them to the mechanism should you have to do something to them well the mechanism it's just a rod that goes from it goes from his thumb all the way up to his body so i would only be adding about three or four inches of, of a shell and that's another thing now i'm not going to make it that hard i'm going to actually fiberglass it to the wood so then i don't have to mess with it so no it's all it is is doing is lengthening this tube that the uh that the rod goes down to get to his thumb from his body gotcha. to the thumb yeah that's great. <laughs> that just cracks me up. <laughs> and also the noise. I know it doesn't sound like a texting noise, but it just, it, it cracks me up. Because it'll be one of those things, I think when he does a punchline and he starts looking at his phone again and starts texting, you know that, that, oh, that was the joke right there. I'm supposed to laugh. You know? <laughs> any questions? Really okay, great. any questions so far? Oh, the baby announcement. All right. You ready yes. for this, Matt? All right. So, yeah, I don't even know the answer to this No, question. you don't have any idea what this is. Well... Uh, as of, uh, and it was great because it was 418 this morning, which is actually my birthday, 418 this morning, my oldest daughter, Bree, and her uh, husband, Eric, my stepson, gave birth to Harrison Thomas Hemphill. And uh, little uh, Harrison, little Harry, uh, weighed in at, oh boy, how much was he? Eight pounds, 15 ounces? So he's a big boy. Oh, big boy. Yeah, and Bree's not big, so I don't know how she did this. So I am now officially a grandpa, and um, uh, Audrey. Congratulations! Thank you. And now Audrey is officially a grandma. How crazy is that? Audrey does not look like a grandma. And not now at my all. my daughters Ashlyn and Kenna are now aunts. And the funniest part is Jack and James, my four and a half year old sons, are now uncles. <laughs> oh, that's great. Do they do they quite understand the? 
how that works? Uh, of course not. They don't. They, all they know is there's a baby, and they're now Uncle Jack and Uncle James, and I'm Grandpa. They, they, well, you're getting a ton of congratulations. Thank all you. over your uh, yeah yeah everything's congrats 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 congrats. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm very proud and very happy for them and the and, and baby and mommy and daddy are happy and they uh, are doing well and uh, I couldn't believe Bree was uh, FaceTiming with a whole everybody in the family call after call after call this morning. So she's taken already taken a nap of course, but it was I think they were in the hospital still in the hospital, but it was 16 hours I think or 14 hours 18 hours something that she was there and then finally gave birth. So now it, this is just you know my brain working with all this stuff going on. Mm -hmm. w w was it crazy to be in like delivering a baby in the hospital with all of well? The I, I guess at first, I guess at first, uh, Eric, the husband, wasn't my son-in-law wasn't going to be allowed there. But I guess things that was weeks wow. ago. But I guess I guess things have calmed down. and It's not nearly as bad as everybody thought it was going to be. So uh, oh, that's great. Oh, oh, I forgot to show this, Matt. Um, so, so anyway, that that's the announce, the baby announcement, and thank you for your congratulations. I see all that. Thank you, and uh, that's my first grandchild. Um. Uh, anyway, one of the things I didn't show Matt is when I had to open up this guy's head to get in there to make the, to put. I didn't originally have springs for his eyes or for his eyebrows, and what I had to do is I wanted to add because everything was gravity controlled. But now I wanted to add springs so his eyes will automatically go back to the center, so I don't have to focus on. All I have to do is point his head the right way, so he'll look like he's he's looking in the right direction, and uh, and then you know again this is just something to add for character. If I ask him a question, he can just sit there and do that. <laughs> like a stupid great. question, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he's back to texting. <laughs> so this is going to take a lot of practice. It's a, it's, it's pretty much a jumble back there of controls, but uh, I've done this for a long time, and uh, I think it's going to come fairly easily. You know. Well, what's interesting, and I think we've talked about this before, is that every one of your characters uh, triggers or... There, there's no two that are exactly the same. Yeah, so the it's not like the, the controls are all very different. Here, let's take his head off. This will scare everybody. We've shown this before, but I might as well show it again. Uh, I don't know that we've ever seen it in one of your dummies. We've seen uh, Archie. Yeah. Oh, but... I've, I think I've shown this before. But these are all when I build these things, it's all custom built. And again, it's all rudimentary. I don't have a a, a shop. I don't know how to work a lathe. I know how to work a lathe, but I, I don't have all. You know, this is all stuff built out of brass uh, and you know and soldering and welding from hobby store stuff. So it's, you know, it's very easy. This right here is the, and this is a, a dowel that I hollowed out uh, with a giant drill bit. It was just a, you know, what is that? A one and a one and a quarter inch dowel that I hollowed out and then uh, built all these controls out of brass. And then this is some epoxy putty that I use to, to form things that, that are in excess of what the wood would be. And so, you know, it's a bit like a clarinet or some kind of instrument that I position everything in positions that I need them to be. So for this guy, you know, there's the mouth. It's like that. Then the eyes, uh, eyebrows, I mean, the eyebrows go up and down like that. And then the eyes, and again, you're not going to see many dummies like this, but you've got the, the, the left and right eyes, but then also the up and down. And again, there's not many dummies that you're going to find that do that. Now, look, here's a question. Because of all of the, the work that you do and all of that, have you ever made one that was uncomfortable or, like, gave you blisters? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yes. And and it's, a, you know, and, and because they're different movements and the, and the mechanics in the head are different for every one of them, uh, because the facial features are in different positions, every one is kind of custom made. If you get into a, a process of, of building a bunch of dummies at once, you're going to build things uh, kind of like on an assembly line where everything is the same and you can make parts and everything will fit. But my, I don't do that. I just make everything work the way it's supposed to. So when that happens, when, when I'm building this, as I'm building the, the, the control post, which is so important, the, to me the controls have to be very, very light and easy to work. Otherwise you end up with, I always forget how to say it, tunnel, carpal tunnel syndrome, right? That's it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> carpal tunnel, tunnel carpal, whatever it is. So these are all feather light, and the springs are very, very light. It's not easy to find light springs, by the way, uh, but very, very light uh, to the touch. And I also don't use any strings anymore. I don't use any rubberized things. It's all springs and metal, and these things will last. They'll be here 100 years from now. The only real thing that I question in some of the building that I do when I get in a hurry in some of these things, some of the mechanics in the head or some placements, I will tack things in place with hot glue 
and then go back and either fiberglass them in place or use epoxy. So uh, there is some hot glue under, you know, in there. And then there are some non-essential things that are hot glued in place. And the reason I use hot glue is because it's so easy. And I've talked about the hot glue gun before. The new hot, some of these new hot glue guns, the professional ones, get up to 450 degrees, and the glue is amazing. But I've yet to have a dummy that I've I've used for uh, that I've used hot glue on. Uh, that is that I've used for 10 years. I think the only dummies I've used with hot glue on are only like a year or two old. So we'll see what happens. But if it starts to fall apart, I you know, nothing I've ever made has ever just fallen apart because of materials. I'm pretty good with that stuff. All right. So it, actually, that brings a, a question. You talk about things falling apart. Somebody, um, where is it, Ray, here? Oh, Amanda Highsmith wants to know, when will this new guy go on tour? And there was a question earlier about how many shows do you do a year? Because obviously... Durability is important. Oh, so one thing I'm proud of is Ahmed because I built him in uh, oh, 2006. Is that right? And I've yet to open yes. up his head and, re and repair anything. Uh, the only thing that breaks on Ahmed is his body because it's supposed to fall apart and things hit the stage and <laughs> smash and, you know, y yanking on limbs and all that stuff. So those things, you know, they, they just take some wear and tear. But the head, he has three movements. He has the mouth. He has his eyes that go back and forth and his eyebrows that go up and down. And uh, those movements, I've yet to open anything up and uh, replace anything that's worn. And how many shows do I do a year? Well, do the math. I do about 10 shows. When we're actually working, it's 10 shows a month. Uh, so uh, 120 shows a year on average, uh, and uh, what was the pace? And, th and those are like, those shows are all two to two and a half hours each. Say it again. Yeah. When when I mean, is it always been 120 shows, or was there a time that you did more than? That? Oh yeah, it used to be. Well, no, you know what? Because I don't know if I was working every other. No, I, I bet there was a point that I was doing more than 120 shows. If it was more like 200 shows a year, because the comedy club days you do sometimes. It, usually, I was doing five shows a week. It'd be a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, six shows a week. And But at, in the beginning of the club days, when I wasn't a, a, a big headliner, it was Tuesday through Sunday. Man, that was brutal. Um, and then unless, unless you're working the improv, when they had the improv in Vegas, and that was 21 shows a week. Three shows a wow. night. Yeah, that was crazy. But they, again, I only had to do 40 minutes. Now I'm doing two, two and a half hours solo with no opening act. Um, so there you go. And when are we going to be back on tour? I don't know. You guys will know as soon as we know. Um, and then this guy will be the reason. Okay. Obviously with a giant audience, a huge, you know, 8,000, uh, seat, 10,000, 12,000 seats that no, nobody's going to see this unless it's on the giant big screen. And we have a 50 foot big screen. And that's the other thing, Matt, if the camera's a little bit below me, you can't see those, those thumbs, right? So I'm going to have to have yeah. a way that he leans forward like this, which is is kind of funny, you know. <laughs> That's great. He's going to lean forward like and, that and work on it. And like you and I talked about for internet videos, though, the options of shots – of his fingers is, are going to be great. It's going to sure. be endless. Yeah, and that's what I was about to say. This is a stage. It's going to be a stage dummy, but he's born on the internet. He's been, uh, you know, I've been creating him during this uh, 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 during this pandemic, and uh, so I started focusing on things that are funny on camera. So if if we get to the point that we start doing videos with him, that's what's important, Matt. We'll have great shots with him, and when you're able to come back over to the house and 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 shoot, uh, we'll have some great angles and shots and stuff that that you do. Uh, so, you know, but again, this all, this is all great planning. It all depends on the relationship and the comedy and the writing and, and will the voice come out? Will the personality come out? I'm, I'm really putting the cart before, before the horse this time. I'm really, really creating this guy, this great dummy, this great character without having written m much material for him yet. And I'm just hoping that, you know, I will be able to, uh, but there's so much commonality here with the phone and the internet and and uh, millennials and the difference in generations. There's just a lot to, to play with there for comedy. I think it'll be fun. And I, I'm seeing a lot of questions, and I think you said a little bit earlier, but for, for the people that are just joining us, do you have a name for the troll yet? We don't have a name for this internet troll yet. I don't know what it's going to be. Oh, oh, and also, Matt, uh, okay, here you go. Uh, we don't have a name. I don't know. Audrey loved the name Todd, and I, I suggested that to you the other day, Matt. I, I think Todd is funny. But I think you're right. It should be more a millennial kind of name. I don't yeah, know what I it think is. That maybe he should have one of those internet names. Like, you know, I'm looking at this, these people asking questions, uh, fans asking questions, and there's some crazy, like, you know, Zacky Do. You know, there's all these, like, weird, like, <laughs> inter <laughs> internet handles that I think are really kind of great. So even if he has a name, I think that 
you should find some. Okay, well, then, then then that's what we should do. We should come up with this lame real name for him, like Todd. <laughs> Not that the name Todd is lame, <laughs> but for this guy, we could make it lame. So, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> right. right don't don't all millennials have that en at the end of their name like Aiden, Braden Jane, and Braden, Dylan. yeah there, again there's nothing wrong with these names no 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 no, no. my kid's name is holden holden I just, yeah you're right yeah i you know th- there's a reason audrey and i picked jack and james somebody told me once that you want to name your child something that could that could actually pass as a supreme court justice <laughs> right. You know, you know what's funny is I, whenever we named our kids, I went through all the names and tried to find things that were negative that rhymed with their names so they wouldn't get picked on in kindergarten. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, but here, I brought some clothing. Out. I went to the boys' room and I stole some shirts because they're at the perfect size now. They're dummy size. So I stole some clothes out of the boys' closet. I also got some stuff out of the dummy closet. And I, and I wanted to just to get a sense of to what you think and what people think and what maybe this guy should be wearing. You ready? Yeah, let's see it. All right, any questions? Any more questions before I get over to that? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking. We're still getting a lot of congrats. And actually, a few people that were late are wondering whether you're having a baby. Oh, yeah. So the, I teased that <laughs> to make it sound like I'm having a baby. No, Audrey and I are not having another baby. We are done, 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 done. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, the microphone's down here. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> you so, probably just blew like thirty speakers across. The <laughs> but um, uh, so my daughter Bree, my oldest daughter Bree, she and her husband Eric gave birth. Uh, Bree gave birth. I hate it. You know, we had a baby. No, she had a baby. The guy's just hanging out, handing out pizza to the staff. That's what I did. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, they had a baby boy and his name is Harrison and we're going to call him baby Harry. I think my boys love saying baby Harry. So a uh, little baby Harry, uh, came into this world last night at four or this morning at four eighteen. We were, ho- my birthday was April 18th. So we'd hoped that he was going to be early about April 18th. But honest to God, Bree said, oh, he was born at four eighteen, And Audrey went, that's your birthday. And I'm like, he was born on my birthday. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, and that, that just happened to happen. They didn't adjust the clock or anything. <clears throat> um, Actually, here's, here's something. Uh, Bonnie Thompson, ha- or Ronnie Thompson, excuse me, has a really interesting idea for the name. Yep. He says it should be a common name, but weirdly spelled. So if it was Todd, maybe it's T-H-O-D-D. <laughs> <laughs> That's Todd. Like a- <laughs> That's Todd. Well, it's like Thomas. You see T-H-O-M-A. Oh, yeah, you're right, Thomas. All right. That's really funny. Tad, you know, Tad. Is, yeah, but anyway, it just, I thought that was an interesting take on it. Yeah. All right. That way name the new dummy Webster. Be, uh, Angela just said, name the new dummy Webster. That's funny. <laughs> Somebody said Toby. Toby's funny. Ava- Avatar. Name him Avatar. That's actually kind of funny. You know, oh, that could be his screen name. You know, uh, there was a time that I was, when I was trying to name Bubba J, I was going through car parts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and there's, yeah, there's there's all kinds of car parts that you can name your your son, but just obscure stuff. I can't think of one right now. Throttle, <laughs> throttle would be a great name. <laughs> throttle, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, all right. Uh, anyway, let me show you some of these clothes and I get your yay or nay. And also on the hair, we talked about the purple wig, but I had to bust him open to get to the inside to put the springs in there. And I didn't realize, you know, because I can I only have so many fingers. But he has to be able to spring back to to whatever it is, where it is he's looking, so I don't have to fool with it myself. Like, the way it was before, if he just sat there, his eyes went up. Now I've got springs on him, so now they look down, and he can concentrate on his uh, on his phone and the, and the typing. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. It makes me laugh every time. Thank you. Yeah, me too. I hope it doesn't get old. I don't think it'll get old. And that's the, you know, you don't want to do it too much, but you want to do it enough that make people keep you laughing. So I had to bust his head open, and I had sealed it shut. But, um, so I, and again, Matt, I, I love this, but now I'm not, I'm not sure. And I, I think we should do the clothes before we do the wig, but I, I just thought this was, uh, I think this is great. And I don't want to do a troll head because then he really will look like a troll. You know what I mean? With the hair like that. I, I yeah. Yeah. It stick straight up. Yeah. But you know, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm getting used to him being bald and I don't know if that's a good idea either. <clears throat> Huh. Well, you know, I think that once you get the clothes together, yeah. You, you, if we if we find like some references for like popular haircuts, that might be a, a thing to consider. Like, but it's still that purple, but like in some kind of 
because I know my kids are into their, like, you know, they're at that age where their hair is very important. Somebody just said it looks like a cell phone Charlie. What is that? I don't Angus know. The, <laughs> Angus the troll. Keep the purple hair. All right, so Virgie Christofferson says keep the purple hair. Uh, purple haze, that's funny. Sprocket, Sprocket. See, that's another great name that I thought of for, for Bubba J, before I named him Bubba <laughs> J. All right. Uh, I just pulled this out. Uh, th th there's a turtleneck. I don't think a turtleneck is right. Do you? I don't think so. If no. he's in his basement, he's he's going to be comfortable. Turtlenecks don't look comfortable to me. You're right. Okay, so no turtleneck. All right. Uh, see these dark? I don't think dark colors go well either, but I wanted something that had kind of the longer uh, sleeves to it. You know, the shorter, longer. What do you call, you call it? What do you call it? A rat? What's the name of it? I, I, I just learned this myself from your, you, your, your I know. internet store. I, it's a, a raglan. A raglan, I've never heard right. That yeah. So I think this is the right style, but I don't think it's the right color. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think well, that's a possibility. Again, if, if if there was something on the chest of that shirt, yeah. Oh, that that's interesting. But you know, has Bubba J worn that shirt? Yeah, these might be Bubba J clothes. I, I don't think know. That was his Christmas. Oh, shirt. was it? Maybe. I don't remember. I got a closet full of dummy clothes. They all have. See, this is the thing. Nobody's ever going to be able to steal my clothes. I can't donate my clothes. <laughs> these dummy clothes, because this is the front, and then here's the back. <laughs> you got a hole cut in it. <laughs> the speculation at Goodwill would be maddening. They'd now like, this, what? Matt, this I actually got when I went to, in fifth grade. I went to Hawaii with my parents, and I swear, in all these years, I've been trying to find a dummy to wear this. I put this on him the other day. You're like, is that the shirt? And I, I love this shirt. I love this this Hawaiian shirt. I wore it in the fifth grade, and it <laughs> that fits looks like. Walter shirt. It looked like Walter. Yeah, your Walter, Walter vacation. But I didn't. I, my sewing skills were not so great way back when. I just kind of cut a hole in the back. Can you see that? So you literally got the, this exact shirt when you were five years old. This exact shirt was. I, I bet there's pictures of me in the fifth grade wearing this thing. Oh, yeah. we need those pictures. Yeah. I, 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 oh, I love. I still love this shirt. How are the colors that good? Did my mother never wash it? Here, here it is. Pukila. <laughs> I wonder if Pukela is still in business. P O O K E L A. That's not how you say it. It's Pukela, Pukela in Hawaii. P O O K E L A. Look that up. P O O K E L A. Can you look that up, Matt? Oh yeah. So I was looking at a couple of co comments about uh, clothes. Remind me to come back to those. In this well, second. all right. Go ahead. We don't need to look. We'll look up that shirt later. <clears throat> okay. Uh, uh, and, I, and there's a couple of people that have said this, and it was one, something that you and I kind of discussed earlier on about his clothing. Uh, Kevin Chirktaw, Chirktaw and Yukino Mitsuki both are suggesting a hoodie. Have you thought about a hoodie? Oh, uh, a hoodie is a good... I might happen to have one right here. I just want to show you one other thing. This is a piece of clothing I had when I was in the third grade. A third grade? No, I was three years old. And I, I, I have been trying to find a dummy to put this on, but it's got to be some kind of hippie. Look at that. That's from the 60s. It's got to be 1966, 65 that my mom got this for me, but I love this wow. vest. How great period is that? Now, here's the when, part. Where did you wear this? I As a kid, I was three years old. <laughs> what do you know? But here's the other part. My mom was from Oklahoma, Ponca City, Oklahoma. And so the back of the shirt, there is a very typical uh, uh, thing uh, for kids' clothes back then. There's Native Somebody American. just asked, is that for a monkey? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not for a monkey. <laughs> You're right. Like, I, it's like an order, organ grinder monkey. Yeah, I need to have a cup. Hold on. <laughs> and then, here's, hold on. Yeah, here, here's my cup. I can get my money. Uh, uh, and I'll do a little tricks for you. The, the rest of that story your mom didn't tell you. She put you to work at three years old. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, do you remember where we had this hanging in the warehouse forever? Oh, come on. Oh, oh yes, I do. I do. Yeah, so yeah, I have a full I, size, away, but, uh, a full size Terminator with the light up eyes, and what's his name? Stan Winston came. It came officially right. from Stan Winston Studios. He's holding the rifle, and he's holding, uh, he's holding one hand out too. Isn't he holding one hand out? I think so. Yeah, he's like, you know, he's kind of like that. Yeah, that like that. One has the gun, and one is holding his hand out. And I actually hung this on his finger as if he was out hunting for me. <laughs> He'd come back in time. He came back in time to when I was three years old. He's trying to kill me. 
<laughs> Somebody just, uh, Michelle Nesbitt suggests that you use my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Bullwinkle. You're not old enough to remember Bullwinkle and Rocky. Of course I am. Wow. They used to play it every, like, you know, we'd come home from school and it would be on at 3 All right. What was the bad guy in his wife's name? I, I know. You're asking me or are we asking for comments? Oh, you know that then. I absolutely know that. Okay. What was her name? Natasha. All right. He was Boris Badenov. That's right. <laughs> and then you what was the, what, who was the guy, that, that the cartoon that followed it that rode the horse? Oh, he was like a Mountie. He was like a Canadian Mountie, right? Of the Northwest Mounties, and he talked like this. <laughs> oh, no, right. no. <laughs> We're losing audience. You know what's funny? Is I wore this shirt the other day, and I had to explain the whole thing to my kids. It was, Dud no it was Dudley, Dudley Do-Right. Dudley Do-Right. Now, I can't remember. His, his horse's name was something stupid, like a name. What was his name? Somebody tell us. Dudley Do-Right's horse is named. Oh, somebody's getting it. Yeah, that's what somebody said. Somebody just said, put the vest over the Hawaiian shirt. That's what I wanted to do. Make it oh. as horrible as possible. <laughs> All right. De Deborah Valentine. Hi, Deborah. The horse. David Murphy says, horse? His name was just horse? Oh. Okay. Oh, that's... <laughs> they ran out of creativity that day. Oh, no. I can't believe I can do that voice. This is the most horrible voice ever. <laughs> oh, Dudley. Remember that? It's, oh, Dudley. <laughs> no. And did, did he? Was it the one with the guy in the train tracks and with the mustache and it Snid would Snidely like, Whiplash. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I definitely remember this. <laughs> this is. We're losing the crowd. <laughs> yeah, right. they're like, oh, this is only for old people. All right, it is. All right. <laughs> All right. So, okay. Here, I love these uh, trivia things. All right. Here's another one. So, uh, this is easy. On the Jetsons. What was his boss's name and the business? Oh, it, it was Stanley Sprockets. No. Something Spr Mr. Spacely and Spacely Sprockets. Space, Spacely Sprockets. <laughs> well, okay, I got one for you. And yep. again, we're going to lose everybody. Uh, Do you, remember his dog, Astro? Absolutely, absolutely. Do you know what Astro's real name was? Oh, no, not a clue. What? Tralfaz. Where do you find that? Dude, it's just one of those things that's stuck in my head since I was like six years old. And I think I'm not—I'm not correct that the same guy that did Scooby Doo's voice also did uh, Astro. I think. Oh, that would—that would make I, sense. I think that's right. Do you remember the maid's name? Rosie. There you go. Rosie the robot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on a second. I—I don't, I don't know the answer to this. Hold on. It was Spacely Sprockets, and what was his competitor's name? Uh oh. Oh. That's, we're going to have to throw that one out. for Yeah, uh, Space Dan Sprocket. Messick, uh, Anthony Nichols says Dan Messick did Astro. Casey Kasem? Casey Kasem did not do, uh, Casey Kasem did uh, uh, Shaggy. Shaggy. Yeah. Um, Cogswell Cogs. That's it, Cogswell Cogs. That's it. Yeah. Oh, wow, somebody yeah. out there. That's really good. Yeah, that's great. Uh, this is one nobody, you don't remember Felix, <laughs> stupid. You remember Felix the Cat, right? Of course, but, but you I, do? not as much as I do those other ones. Let's get to this I, I know what thing. Felix is, but I that that was before me. I think. All right, I remember Felix Cat. All right, here we go. Do you, do you recognize this suit? <laughs> I definitely recognize it's that Sweet suit. Daddy D's jogging suit. <laughs> yes, and if anybody remembers the television show, yes, when Sweet Daddy D did the uh, uh, Civil War reenactment, I think that was the this Jeff, Jeff Jeff War. This War. Yeah, but we had this covered up. The, the oh, people yeah. who worked on my show that spent money, I'm telling you, they were out of hand. The fact that they, <laughs> the, the fact that they went and bought a juicy couture track shoot suit for Sweet Daddy D is like, are you? How much did you spend on a track suit? How, how much is a juicy track suit? Seriously. <laughs> For a four-year-old. Not even that. Like a three-year-old. Give me a break. Now I kind of like this. I love the purple track suit. Or, or well, just, it looks comfy, and it's you know I, I think a hoodie is very millennial. Yeah, and I don't I don't know that I've ever seen a, a, a trilopus dummy with a hoodie before. He has pants on. Oh, so oh, you mentioned the other day, Matt, that he needs earbuds. Yes, that would be awesome. Yeah, he's but it's it, it, you know the regular earbuds aren't good enough. It's got to be the the wireless ones that uh, are like that have the things hanging down that look like earrings like that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm I know, I'm like really embarrassed for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I still so I can hear you. I know I wear them too when I'm uh, working out on the uh, on the elliptical. 
Okay, so I, I love this idea. I think, oh man, this is kind of great. Can we see this? Here's the trouble. When I decide on what I'm going to put on him, it's a commitment because because of this mechanism, I'm going to have to really cut these arms up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to put a bucket of plastic wood back here so it doesn't fall over. A full one. Okay. So, yeah, it's going to be a real commitment because this is a nice tracksuit that I got. Oh, look, it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> It's already got a hold. Yeah, the $800 track suit. Yeah, Sweet bucks. Daddy will not be happy, though, if you That's further right. cut his. But see, what I was getting at on the ear things is if we do the if we do the hoodie, is, is he going to be like that? That's actually <laughs> really funny. I, the back of his head's gone because I uh, opened him up. I don't know. Yeah, you'd have to figure out what to do around the ears. But then I don't have to do hair. Or or you could do just that little fringe that I see a lot of these kids. Yeah. Yeah. I'll send you some pictures from TikTok. You'll see what I'm talking about. All right. I don't know. This hoodie's a pretty great idea. It might be too small for him. If if we do if we do the head, it'll be too small. But I guess I can go back to juicy when they open up again. <laughs> And ask for the larger size. Yeah, and then send a nasty letter to whoever did our purchasing on the TV show. <laughs> um, that's pretty great. Okay, let me show you the last shirt, though. This one I thought was pretty great. This one. Marcus the Geek says, keep the hoodie but leave the hood down. Oh, that's a cool shirt. Yeah, I think this is great. Not purple hair. Is more, wait, somebody said it's purple. it should be a bag. What's a bag hoodie? This is what Chris oh, Krieg says. It should be a bag hoodie. What's a bag hoodie? I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look that up. All right. I'm sure my kids know. Yep. All right. Uh, and again, this is... Uh, I can't throw this on him because all these mechanisms are in the way and I'd have to unhook everything to make it work. Uh, Somebody said he should be in his, his underwear, which is kind of an interesting idea only because if he's on the internet... He's only ever seen from here to here. So from the waist down, he can wear whatever he wants. <laughs> How funny if it would be if I could... Oh, this is like laugh out loud funny. What if I could build him not wearing pants and then make some sort of illusion that makes it look like his crotch is blurred in real life? <laughs> you could... Like one of those plastic things that you put... Like it's like a magnifying... Yes. You know what I'm talking about? You put it in your car right. so you can... You know what I'm talking about. It's like a, it's got sure. like a lenticular... It's a, it's a fisheye lens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so in real life, his crotch is blurred. <laughs> <laughs> Where are your pants? Hello. <laughs> oh my gosh. We're losing the audience again. <laughs> All right, so let me uh, let me show you the legs. So again, I went to the uh, uh, to my somebody. Uh, you, somebody's yeah. also suggesting tidy whities, which is funny. Yeah, tidy whities is great. That is actually funny, and it'll work with the legs because um, um, let me see. Uh, these were the the legs uh, for the first baby, Seamus, uh, Marianne Taylor, who makes a. Uh, soft puppets, Muppets, uh, this was the part of the body she made for me, and I took that leg off, the baby, the soft, because I wanted to make a hard body for the, uh, for the, for the, for Seamus. So I took this off, scanned it, <clears throat> and then printed legs for baby Seamus, and I've now reprinted them for, uh, for this guy. So there's the actual, after I scanned it and then printed it, th this is, uh, support material that I'll take off. Came out of the 3D printer, uh, but there's two right legs. There's the soft one, and then this one is now made of AB ABS plastic. So Matt, I, I wanted to do that so he could also have a thigh, and I and I got I have to sand the cottage cheese out of this. I left the cottage <laughs> cheese look in there because he was a baby, but I'll sand out that cottage cheese look. And again, his toes are awesome. I'm gonna give him sandals. Y you're right. Some boxer shorts would be, but see, that's the thing. You're not gonna see much of him because he's gonna be sitting down. But these legs, I think, are, are perfect because, uh, you know, I mean, they're, you can't 
Can you tell? No, you can't tell. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they'll actually be really good. Get rid of that. Now, here's a question. Thing. You've got those soft legs. Mm -hmm. Why why not just use the soft legs and put the hard legs? Why, what, what's the advantage? The Just the, I don't like, it's the wrong color and the wrong texture. It's got to match his face. His hand. Got, oh, that, yeah. absolutely. That they could that be wider, sense. but this is, the light will hit them differently. It'll just be all wrong. So... Anyway, for those who haven't seen this yet, this is uh, this is what this guy does. Patricia Mullen suggests calling him ha uh, Hashtag, which I think is a kind of a cool Oh, name. that's a great name. Yeah. That's great. Again, these all suggestions are... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Somebody suggests that he needs an, a, a tattoo of Ahmed on his leg. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and what do you think about that? Uh, hmm, 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 no, okay. <laughs> awesome. So uh, Jay Ringle is asking, what kind of voice have you come up with the troll? I'm just going back to this question because I see a lot of people asking that. And Well, again, um, one of my favorite sketches on SNL is the Californians, and I love the voices that they use there. And I think just as a millennial and looking at his face, he just doesn't care. Uh, uh, that's what he looks like. He just doesn't care and he's distracted by his phone. I think that type of voice is where I'm going. California-ish. Not the smartest sounding accent on the planet. I think it's just... <laughs> and, and he just... It, you know, he's more interested in this than he is in anything that I'm saying. Right? Much oh, more, say that again. He, I was reading questions. He's much more interested in his phone. Than, just like you, Matt. Oh, he's much yeah, more sorry. interested in his phone. <laughs> it was, that, that was Case it. That's exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that that's... Because, uh, that's, like you say, I mean, I do that constantly. It's yep. like the worst thing ever. Yeah. I feel bad using this mug, Matt, because, you know, I've used my mist mug forever. Oh. In every video, that's, everything that's we've ever done. And, and the only That's reason an I'm, this is an ember, and the only reason I'm using it is because it keeps it hot. But uh, you know, all right, what else? I gotta Let's go in see. a minute. Oh, gotcha. Let's see. Oh, we didn't do the fiberglassing. Oh, well, well, I did. Did you decide on the fiberglassing? Or you know what? I can of... always uh, take it off. Let me just show everybody real quick how this works. Okay, so fiberglassing. Uh, it's basically resin and fiberglass cloth. That's fiberglass. And uh, 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 there's also, uh, there, there, it, it can get more complicated with different materials. Uh, with, uh, I'm, the name of the cloth is, uh, ah, skip my mind. Anyway, um, so there's different, uh, different weaves of fiberglass cloth. This is the really heavy duty stuff. This is the kind you might make a boat out of or whatever, some really heavy weave. Then there's the medium weave for, you know, this this is used a lot on model airplanes or whatever, smaller projects. And then there's the really fine, fine, fine stuff, which you'd use on, again, model airplanes or just barely skimming over stuff. Um, this is a, a really heavy-duty weave, which is great, but it will absorb the resin big time, and I don't need anything this thick or this heavy. So I think I'm going to go with the medium because it holds shape just a little bit before you put the resin on top of it. And uh, um, I think that's uh, the best. Um, and also, yeah, Matt, when you get into real fiberglassing, if you're building a car or a boat or whatever, you're talking about a gel coat. You know, if you have a mold, which is the negative, you start with the gel coat, and then you go with the. Uh, why can't I remember the name of the stuff? Uh, I was just thinking about it a second ago. I never use it. The next you layer. Like chopped fiberglass. Stuff? Yeah, the next layer layer is called. I can't remember what the hell it's called. I never use it. Never even talk about it. Um. Help me out, somebody. What's it called? It's the it's the gel coat, and then it's the <laughs> not I'm, carbon I'm fiber. Somebody talking... out there's got to know. I, I it's 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 a very simple word. Uh, anyway, okay. So somebody uh, says fiberglass matting, but yeah, awesome. the matting, the mat. That's what I'm looking for. The wow. name mat. You know, like you. What? <laughs> I could have told you that. <laughs> yeah, so the mat, the fiberglass mat, it goes down, and that's a really thick stuff. And then you can put the fiberglass. Uh, there's so many different ways of doing it. There's no there there are right and wrong ways. But again, Matt, what what I'm 
proud of is I cobble this crap together in my garage. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't look at YouTube videos. I go out and buy materials. I think this will work. I might ask somebody a few questions, but most of the time it's just me experimenting and do it, doing it the hell away I want it. And it works. I don't care. Uh, so here's a question about that that, that cloth, and because I've never really worked with fiberglass before. Yep. I was always as a kid to me, you know, my dad, don't touch the fiberglass. You're gonna get it. It's gonna make you itch. Does that make you itchy? Uh. Yeah, the, the, that that, that the, kind. This is the insulation stuff. A, a, again, there's there's, you know, there's so many. I shouldn't answer questions about this because there are fiberglassing <laughs> experts out there that know what they're doing. They're if they watch this, they're going to want to shoot themselves because uh, I'm an idiot here working with their materials and they're masters at this craft. I I'm just I have materials. I know what works, and and I can I'll demonstrate how I use this garbage. You know what I mean? Fiberglass has been around forever forever i mean since like i'm gonna go with i'm gonna go with the 40s maybe the 30s i think it, yeah I, I don't know i might be completely wrong but i think it goes way the hell back so what i'm gonna do here is just again i'm old i'm just guesstimating i'm just looking at this uh just guessing here at what size that i need because we're on the internet and i don't have time so i'll make a tube out of that it'll be about that big there so I'll need a square about that big. So again, Matt, it's all about the resin and the cloth. That's it. And because what happens is you've got the resin, which uh, which uh, uh, after you mix it together uh, with hardener, you got the resin, you mix it with the hardener, you've got X amount of pot time, X amount of work time. You then work it in, you paint the fiberglass cloth with the resin, you lay the, the cloth into the mold or over whatever you want, squeegee out the excess, uh, uh, the excess uh, resin, and then it hardens, and you've got this beautiful shell, or 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 whatever. So that's the real way of doing it, <clears throat> you know. Minus all the other stuff, like the 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 mat. With the mat, I think is what has all the bad fibers in it. I don't know. Um, um, and Actually, Gonzo fifty nine says yes. It will make you itch. It's shredded glass. Okay, so that's not what this is. I don't think this is the stuff you buy in the model store. They call it fiberglass cloth. But I, I, th this is not the bad stuff that, that goes in your nose and gives you cancer. You, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, yeah, I hope not. No. And uh, Linda Williams says 1932 was fiberglass's origin. There you go. So you can't see this. Let me move this down a little bit. I'll try and move this forward. Oh, there's, hurt. there's shirts hanging on my tripod now. <laughs> it like, weighs like 20 pounds. <laughs> oh, that's the other thing is I've used really lightweight materials on this dummy. And uh, he weighs next to nothing. So uh, I'm just cutting a piece that'll fit. And again, the mechanisms, how much of this can you see? The mechanisms are right inside here. It goes from his thumb down here through that. I don't know if you can see it or not. And then there's... So will you have to, are you going to put something over that to... Yeah, what I'm showing you, I'll show you the arm here. So basically, let me get rid of this head before I drop it. That's probably good. <clears throat> All right, that's horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put it over here where I won't get anything on it. Sharina Mushins wants to know, or Mushins wants to know, uh, what's his age going to be? I, I think his age, age, his age, I think, Matt, has to be like early 20s, right? But he still lives in his that parents' basement. Right. He still lives in his parents' basement. Okay, so what we have here is the arm. And uh, uh, I just cut this dowel in half or, or cut a section out of it. Um, knowing that the mechanism would travel from his thumb all the way up here to the body where the link is. And um, uh, then I took, um, to house this in, I took two zip ties and just cut them off and drilled holes in them and shaped them around to make the extra uh, shape on the arm. And I did that to make it kind of a skeleton for laying this fiberglass cloth over it. So I'll just lay that over that and leave it there. And again, the only reason I'm going to do this, uh, the shirt would not get in the way here. It would not um, interfere with the movement. The reason I want to do it is in case I want to put a shorter sleeve shirt on him so I don't have to take it all the way to, to the shirt to here. I want to be able to have him have a little bit shorter sleeve so it could go to there. Uh, all right. Can you still see that? Yep. Yeah. So again, I just see, have to... Sierra... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, Sierra Meeks says to name him Steve. <laughs> Just Steve. And I only bring that up because 
of all the Steves that you have in your phone. Oh, the Steve, and you know, uh, wait a minute, isn't that the isn't that the name of the dog on Aquaman Saves America? Oh, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. Is it Steve? Yeah, can't remember. I'd have to go back and look, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah. All right. Again, this is all eyeballing it. Just eyeballing it. So it's going to be about right there. So this is basically the adult version of paper mache. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, and and when you're putting the fiberglass in the head, you can cut it into or, or whatever you're laying it. You can you can cut these the fiberglass cloth into strips and just like paper mache, coat them in in uh, in resin and lay them in the in whatever mold. And you make this. That's how I did Walter's head. And again, I didn't know what I was doing. The first Walter's head before I was or the second Walter's head before the 3D printing. The current one I'm using now, I fiberglassed that all myself. By using a, I made a clay head, a plaster of Paris two-piece mold, and then I laid, I laid the uh, uh, the fiberglass cloth in the plaster of Paris mold with a mold release so it wouldn't stick, um, wow. and I did it all like paper mache. And his head came out really strong, and uh, uh, heavy. So the current Walter is very strong and heavy, but uh, it's great. Can you still see this? You got to tell me when you can't see something. I can. that. Oh, I can totally see it. Sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, again, still reading comments and what, because they're coming in very quickly. Yep. But yeah, we can totally see. Okay. So, so that wrapped around there like that. And again, this is going to be short and dirty and quick and, uh, so what? All right, and then what I'll do later is go, uh, if I don't like some of the shape, I'll either, I'll add, uh, some, uh, some putty to it, some epoxy putty or some, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, plastic wood, dough, this stuff, which I use all the time. I love that stuff. To, to fill yeah, in I gotta holes. get some of that. To fill in holes or to make shapes. Yep. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm looking at the, the, the seam here. When you do the fiberglass, will that seam more or less go away, or is that something you'll have to adjust? No, I'm just that? doing this now for size. I'm going to put it on the underside so you won't oh. see the seam. And that, well, Of course, it, it, no, if you add, again, you can add body putty. Uh, you can add uh, spot putty like this, glazing and spot putty, and fill in the holes or the imperfections. That gets down to the really fine stuff. But if you're you know, filling in giant gaps and all that and filling in holes or having to build stuff up, then I use the plastic wood. <clears throat> now, ha have you thought about this guy's relationship to the other characters? Somebody asked earlier, what does Peanut think of him? But just in regard to if there's... More I think there. I, I think there. Are, yeah, that's really interesting. I, I think um, he's going to be the new guy, and I, I think that's just like, yeah, it, uh, my guy. It's like a penal colony in that in the suitcases. I mean, they, you know what I mean. They're all, they're all a group, and the new guy coming in probably won't be welcomed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I wonder whether he's not somehow related to Walter, like he's his nephew or something. That's really funny too. Yeah, that's a great idea. I don't know, Matt. That's why you get the big bucks. Uh, oh, actually, somebody just Andrew Locke says make him Walter's son. So somebody else is on the same uh, same. Yeah, I don't think his son. I think Walter's got to be able to hate him and like yeah. really really dislike him. <laughs> he doesn't want to go to like Thanksgiving dinner because right <laughs> this guy's good. Thod is going to be there. <laughs> Thod. <laughs> okay, so if you'll see, can you see this right here? This is a a um, a slot in here that I molded in the original hands. Because the cloth, usually the arms are cloth, so I'd bring the cloth up to here, take a wire, and uh, twist the wire so the cloth would be trapped in there and the arm would be permanently attached to the cloth, just twisting the, the bailing wire. And then you fold the cloth back over the wire this way. Well, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this just, again, can you see that? I'm going to glue this just on the other side of the slot. So now what I'll be able to do is then take plastic wood or epoxy dough and then just feather the edge of the hand into the arm. See what I'm saying? So yeah, I'm going yeah, to, yeah. It'll, it'll have a rough edge right now, but it'll kind of be perfect. And then, so the beginnings of this, this what I'm about to do now is uh, dangerous, <laughs> meaning... Uh, uh, dangerous to the to the process. Like I'm using some some uh, pretty good super glue that uh, could potentially ruin the mechanism on this arm if it flows in the wrong place. So I'm not going to use the really thin stuff. Um, we've got the thin stuff and we got the fairly thicker stuff. But this is a cyanoacrylate, uh, uh, you know, basically an industrial strength super glue. And I used to use Zap and Zapagap, but the guys at the hobby store 
talked me into this stuff saying that uh, it's really good. So this is called the gap filling, which means it'll fill in gaps. And this is called a kicker, which will make it harden instantly almost. So what I want to do is, is tack this thing into place so that when I paint the, uh, the resin on it, uh, it won't go anywhere. If you were doing a mold, you just get this thing soaking wet and then just lay it into the mold. But this is the opposite. I'm doing a positive and not a negative. So uh, it's going to have to stay where I put it, and I don't want to have to mess with it. Um, I could hot glue it, but again, I don't know how hot glue would respond underneath the resin. And it, and it wouldn't be permanent, and it would be mushy. Uh, so I'm going to just use the, again, I'm just going to use this stuff here just to tack it into place. Uh, wish me luck. I hate this part. <laughs> so uh, uh, all of these, you know, things that you're using, the, the fiberglass, I mean, all of this stuff is pretty readily uh, Oh, yeah, this is, all, this is all hobby store and, and Home Depot stuff. Again, yeah. I'm, not a, I'm not a high tech kind of guy when it comes to this kind of stuff. All right, so what I'm going to do here is the dangerous part. I'm just going to drip a little bit of this on here. Somebody said, watch out for the MacBook. <laughs> can you see? Can you, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's four years old. It's ready to be replaced. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to put that on there. Can you, again, Matt, can you really see that? I can, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I get it on my fingers all the time, the super glue stuff. But my, my fingers are like... They're, they're like they're like hardened I don't know what they are it's it's ridiculous they're, they're so thick and I've burned them so many times and I've I've you know stuck glue to them that I, I I don't think there's any pores left in my skin that chemicals can get in my body <laughs> and if, if anybody wants visual representation of that they need to check out the making of the Ahmed mobile video that we have on YouTube oh my gosh yep that's right you remember what your thumb looked like that yeah night? absolutely <laughs> Yeah, and I, I know it's bad. I again, I I don't know. But by the way, I cut myself the other day really bad. Did I tell you this story? I am so careful in this garage when it comes to using tools. I have power tools around here. Uh, one of the most dangerous things is is the Dremel tool uh, because there's there's there are there are um, uh, uh, bits in here that Dremel does not make that third parties do, like this one right here. Look at that. That is a saw. Oh, it is as yeah. sharp as it can possibly be. Dremel does not make this. That this is a third party it's terrifying. thing. It's terrifying. Yeah, it is terrifying. It's, that's what This is what horror movies are made out of. I mean, these are as sharp as razor blades right here. They are. And if and, that thing let go, it would fly across the room like a frisbee. Well, that that's not the point. I mean, and here's another one. Again, <laughs> this is not a Dremel accessory. This is made by somebody else. There's another one. And, uh, you know, I am unbelievably careful with this kind of stuff. Uh, I did take shop class in the seventh and eighth grade, and I learned, you know, I, when the shop teacher is missing a couple fingers. Um, and so I'm so careful out here with what I do. I always wear uh, glasses, uh, you know, uh, safety goggles. I go inside. So one of my duties uh, during the uh, coronavirus, during the pandemic, is I wash dishes. I have agreed to wash every dish that Audrey cooks three meals a day. I wash all the dishes, every dish. I am also in charge of floors. I sweep and I vacuum all the floors. Did I tell you what, how I cheated on that, Matt? For, no. my, for my birthday, I asked for a Roomba. Oh, <laughs> hey, you know what? Yeah. Work, work smarter, not harder. Yeah, exactly. So now all I'm, all I'm in charge of is emptying the bin on the Roomba. And now they even have Roombas that'll empty themselves. Anyway. So I am so, so very, very careful with, the, with these tools out here. I go inside to wash the dishes. There's some contraption in the sink that Audrey has used that, that day to prepare food. I didn't know what it was, and I picked it up, and there was some food on it, and I ran my finger along it to wipe the food off. That was the blade. Oh. Yeah, and I mean, I slit my finger open, and it bled like a mofo. And I, I mean, usually those things take a second or uh, three seconds to hurt. It was pain yeah. immediately. My boys are like, what's wrong, Daddy? There's blood everywhere. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And you're trying to, like, act super calm? Oh, no. I was I was like, ah, give me the Band-Aid. Oh, like, oh no. but my point is, you can glue a cut together with this stuff. <laughs> Isn't that what super glue was originally made for? I don't know. But I think uh, so World War One or two. Like something that was I don't know. Purpose. All right, yeah. so so see what I've done so far is now I've tacked this into place. I've just tacked it into place and I'm gonna make the seam inside here. But now I'm gonna tack it around the rest of the wrist as well. 
So all I have to do I now. Just got a, I just got a text from uh, Jason Brown. He wants to know who's text conversations on that phone. <laughs> what? What is he talking about? Uh, for, on the phone. Uh, on on the character's phone, he wants to know who's oh. uh, text conversation is on that phone. <laughs> it was a, it was an internet thing. I don't know. It's some some guy named Brian. I just found, I was going to shoot it myself, but I found an image on the on the web. Some guy named Brian. He's talking about being in the park. I don't know what it is. All right. So anyway, so you see the fiberglass cloth laying against the hand. So again, I'm just going to tack this into place with this stuff. Just lay it like this. Wrap it along here. And I love super glue, by the way. This stuff is. This kind of super glue, though, the industrial strength. These are the Zap or the, the whatever this e-hobby house stuff is. It's great. So, again, you do it like that. I'm going to wipe it a little bit. I should use a paper towel instead of my finger. <laughs> if we weren't all watching, you'd use your finger. You're, that's exactly right. <laughs> I would use my finger. So, wipe it like that. So, Hold on. And then we shoot it with a little bit of the kicker. And the, the fumes, I don't know if the fumes are bad for you, but they will make your eyes water like a mofo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say that's a sign that it's bad for you. Yeah, it's maybe it's non-toxic. <laughs> There's a reason I'm in the garage. All right, so you got to give that a few seconds, and the thicker stuff takes a little while to cure, uh, a little while longer. But now it's now that's nice and solid, and that cloth is going nowhere. It's great. So it's set like that stuff oh, yeah. makes it set like that. Oh yeah, it's done. So then I'll come around the backside, and again, just putting this all into place. I'm just tacking it on the inside of the wrist here. Can you see that? I can. Uh, okay. So I will tack this. I am going to leave my finger there for this one. Uh-oh. Yeah. Oh, and I've peeled off layers of skin doing this, too. <laughs> We've talked about it before, burning yourself with a hot glue gun. Like oh, I, it. I don't. I don't I can, this thing will get up to 450 degrees, and I've yet to burn myself with it. Oh, and I will, I will put the hot glue on and then wipe it off with my finger. Yeah, I've done that too. <laughs> but uh, but, I, but I mean, if you do it fast enough and you got enough calluses, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> Kids, do not. Do not try yeah. that at home. Do not. All right, a little more of this right here. All and right. a disclaimer, if anybody can notice, your garage door is open. It, it is. You have a nice breeze. Yeah, it is. And, <laughs> and, and, but also, when this stuff kicks, when, when it dries, there's a nice puff of fumes that come out of it. You know it's done. <laughs> it does. When it puffs, let's see, can you see it? It'll start smoking. I can't. Yeah. Oh, will it really? Oh, yeah. You'll see a big puff of fumes, and that's what you got to stay away from because it, it'll, it'll, it feels like somebody threw acid in your eyeballs. Oh, my God. Been there, done that. Okay, so now... <clears throat> Oh, I got a whiff of it. <laughs> <laughs> and you fall out of frame and everybody's like, what happened to him? Where's Jeff? What happened to him? <laughs> He's smelling his glue again. He's sniffing his glue. <laughs> so uh, Earl Yates, this is a funny name, suggests that you name him Conway Twitter. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. Now, if I was a certain other ventriloquist that I know of, I, I, I know a couple guys who would name their dummies that. That's like horrible. <laughs> it's really funny. Yeah, it's funny, but uh, no. Yeah, you can't do that. No. It, I just, puns, I, you know, look, I, I, there, there's a couple of puns in my act, and they're from Bubba J, and I leave them there because they're stupid, but puns are the lowest form of comedy. <clears throat> Unless it's a really good one. <clears throat> but any, any joke that the audience can groan at, no. <laughs> Unless we're all groaning together, right? Uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> Not even then. All right, so this tacking came undone. I gotta redo that one. Yeah, where my thumb was, it came undone. Can you still see it? I can. Okay. Now I'm gonna hold it down with a piece of metal so it'll stay in place and not stick as easily. Yeah, this kicker's amazing stuff too. Um, now I'm going to use my finger. Don't tell anybody. Okay. There we go. Ah! So we're getting. A, oh, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, we're getting, we're getting more more uh, more more name suggestions. We got text. Text. Nick. What? Yeah. What's the other one? Yeah, text. Yeah, somebody said uh, name him text. That's kind of uh, funny. Anonymous is another name. But text is funny because it's text. Uh, Text. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
and, and the the whole fact that you're from Texas. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Biff is another suggestion. Yeah, the trouble with Biff is the trouble with I'd love Biff, but that's Back to the Future. Right. <coughs> uh, somebody suggested Rick, which makes sense in an internet way because of being Rick rolled. Uh, what? Yeah, yeah, you. Oh, come on, you. Oh, I know rolled. that, I, but is that is that really a thing? Oh, it's huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I, I know, but I mean, is that really? I mean, but people wouldn't get it. Just calling him Rick, they wouldn't understand. They they wouldn't put two and two together. No, you'd have there. You would have to be clever. And I, do I don't want to have to. Exp- I don't want to have to explain the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Darwin is another idea here. That's kind of good. All right, I gotta cheat a little bit and put a uh, cut in this. Somebody said you should name him Graham, as in Instagram. <laughs> See what I mean? It's like people. I'm just, I'm just reading them. People. <laughs> Dexter the texter. <laughs> There's some things you go to the public for, and some things you don't. You can name him Heckle. That's another one. Tyler. Tyler's kind I of. I saw funny. Kyle earlier. Kyle's good. Oh, this is a good one actually. Xander. Why Xander? Just because it's, it feels very millennial. Yeah, I guess it does. It's funny. Webster hashtag is another name. That's Walter funny. the Third, if he's related any, in any way to Walter. The Third. So as I do this, I have to make sure the mechanism still works. Yeah, I, I wonder. And when you put the resin on there, is there a danger of it? No, it won't, it won't, no this this weave is thick enough. It's not going to go through. Oh, I see. So it'll still basically be cloth-like on the interior. No, no, it'll go through. It just won't, I mean, it'll go through, but it won't drip through. And plus, I'm going to cheat a little bit on the resin. You'll see. So now this is sort of, again, I just got to tack this into place. And wherever you tack it, wherever you put this super glue, the fiberglass will not, the, the resin will not go. So... You know, I'm mixing mediums here. Nobody, I've never done this by, by the b- this way. By the way, I've never. Oh, I've once never, again, I, if it starts to smoke, head out. No, I, I've just head never. Out. I've never tacked it this this much in place like this. I'm doing this mainly for camera, just to get it done with, uh, and to do it the safer way. <laughs> normally, I probably would have had safer way, as in, so I won't ruin it. I, I normally, I probably would have. Uh, uh, dip the whole thing in, in the resin and just wrapped it on, around here. But I, then I couldn't touch the camera. I couldn't do anything. I'd have gloves on, but I just didn't want to chance that. Okay, this is getting close now. Any more questions? Statements? Uh, just a lot of... Oh, uh, Dallas Picks wants to know where in Dallas were you raised? He's from Oak Cliff. Oak Cliff. Uh, yeah, I went to Richardson High School. So we lived in North Dallas, just on the edge of Richardson. Northwood Hills Elementary and Northwood Junior High, which is now Rise Academy. And if uh, and and for your A and E biography, the last one, you guys went back there, yeah. Yep, yeah, my buddy and I, good buddy and I, Glenn Gaines and Steve Jones, we all grew up together. Glenn and I have known each other from the fifth grade on, I think, and then Steve joined in junior high and. Uh, his brothers, uh, Greg and Jeff Jones, were younger. But, uh, yeah, during my last biography, uh, they did two of them, and then on the second one we, we did, we went back to Dallas, and I even got my 71 Mercury Marquis, as you know, Matt. We found one just like my childhood car, my 16-year-old car that my mom and dad gave me. We refurbished it, and we drove it around Dallas. That thing was a blast. I love that car. It's so stupid. And the, the best was, because I didn't go to Dallas with you guys, but, you know, obviously I get all the alerts from your Facebook lives and stuff. Right. And you broke down. Oh, I broke down. That's right. But, but it was great because you Facebook live the whole thing. Did I really? So I knew what was going on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why you, do I not remember that? You the side of the freeway. It was a horrible nightmare. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Fine. All right. So now, okay, so now you see the basic shape is there. And uh, now I just got to trim this a little bit. And then the question is, do I trim it before or after I fiberglass it? Eh. Hmm. So if you trim it after, obviously you got to use one of those danger blades. No, because that's what I'm about to tell you, the cheating I'm going to do here. Hold on. I need my little Swiss Army knife. <clears throat> I, You know, Matt, people ask you if you get stranded on a deserted island, it could take one thing, what would it be? And for some reason I've been thinking of that. If I could take one thing, what would you take? Yeah. 
Oh. I've, I've already thought of it. If I had one yeah. thing to take with me, you know what it would be? Your Swiss Army knife? My wedding ring. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then we get past that. <laughs> After we get past that, it would be this Swiss Army knife, my little one here. I use this every day, multiple times. Now, one year for Christmas, didn't you get that? Didn't uh, you get that crazy, like, fat one that's got, like, no oh, blades on it? I should show that. It's under my desk. Oh, my gosh. It, it would be, oh. you got to remember, you remind me for next time. It has, um, it is the most ridiculous, most awesome Swiss Army knife ever made. And it's that official. Would be really, it would literally take the whole YouTube live to go through every blade on that thing. Absolutely. And I've cut myself <laughs> with it because it's so complicated. <laughs> I, I have injured myself closing that thing. And if people think you're a moron. No, when you see this thing, you'll understand. It was kind of made as a joke, but it was by, but it was officially by the Victorinox people. Yeah. Yeah. And it's literally like this, this thick, right? I mean, it's ridiculous. It's like that. Um, oh, wait a minute. It's, 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 this, this, it's this wide. It's literally that wide. It has every no. blade they ever made. Okay, you've never showed it to me. I just saw the picture on the internet. <laughs> Wait a minute. How wide it? It could be. I'm, I'm not denying it. I just, I, for some reason in my brain, it was like this big. Okay, maybe it's like that big. I don't remember. Wow. I don't remember. I don't, cool. I don't remember. You know what? It's been a couple of years since I even opened the box and looked at it. So, so seriously, next time on, on the, our live, I just want to see it. Yep. So you've never seen it? I don't think so. I just I remember, uh, you know, finding that thing on the internet and and. Oh, and that's right. Because the former it. company that you worked for bought it for me for Christmas that year. Right. They asked me what should they get, what 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 should we get Jeff Dunham for Christmas? Right. And I was like, well, I'm sure he doesn't have this one. Wait, did I not say that? Wait, you came up with that? I didn't tell you about it. I don't think so. I think we may have found it at the same time. It was one of those synchronicity things. Wow, that's so funny. Well, thank you, Matt. <laughs> uh, Kelly B wants to know, is his personality going to be paranoid like Peanut? No, definitely not. He is not going to care about anything. Yeah. Don't you think? I, I agree, yeah. He's m more of a laid back yep. kind of... Yeah. He he's not going to care, not going to worry. He's going to be totally disinterested in everything. I think. <sighs> okay. The good part about trimming this now is I don't have to do it with high-powered tools. Somebody is suggesting Boomer. I don't know whether they're calling us Boomer or whether they're suggesting that as a name. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Speaking of Boomer, you know, I was a, I was friends with Boomer Esiason for a while. Oh, really? Yeah, when we go on the American Airlines Celebrity Ski uh, event, and I got to know oh. him, I got to know him pretty well. <laughs> I thought maybe it was from, like, Best Damn Sports Show or something. Uh-uh. From the American Airlines thing that we did, that I was went, went on many, many years. Somebody said, name him Phonokio. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> All right. So, again, this isn't the best job in the world. i got to get going here. Uh, and we're boring people. So, uh, i gotta, I got to tack this down a little bit more, <clears throat> and then we'll be good to go. Okay, one more. Phonokio. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, that's funny. And so John Goldman wants to know: Is the character going by his by his name or username? Uh, do they need to come that, up? That with we names? didn't finish that sentence. It was like uh, that thought. It was like it's a great idea to have a regular name for him that's really lame, but then he's got to have, like you said, Matt, his internet name, whatever that is, yeah. and it's got to be cool. Cool, but. You know, funny. Yeah, like Kyle Magic is suggesting something like clickbait Corey 19. Right. You know, there's always a number. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's obviously got to be easier than that. But, yeah, in that in that, in that that vein. Larry Wells says Tyler Texton. <laughs> oh, my gosh. None. <laughs> enough of the puns. <laughs> be gone. Yeah. Donnie Downvote. <laughs> Yeah, all really these names are coming through here. All right. All right. So what you have here is you've got basically this uh, fiberglass cloth wrap around his arm, which I am now going to use uh, put the resin on, and it will form this hard shell. 
and there he is, and the mechanism still works. Great, perfect. Um, and I'll do the same on the other side, but what will this allow me to do when I fill this in and smooth everything out and then paint it? And the, and the hands are not finished being painted. I have to do shadows and texture and all that stuff to make them look good. And again, for people in an 8,000, 10,000 seat arena, nobody's going to care. But for close-up camera work, I want to make it look good. I want to paint his nails, you know, just to make them look natural. And again, the shading and a little veining, and little veins and stuff like that in here. But again, I'll be able to smooth this out, feather the, the edges together with the fiberglass, and fill the fiberglass holes in uh, with spot putty or whatever. And then he'll, his sleeves will be able to come down to, to all the way up to here. You know, just like the right That's there. That's great. Okay, so Matt, here's how I'm going to uh, cheat, cheat on the fiberglass resin. Usually it's a resin. It comes in a, 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 you know, a can. You mix it with hardener. This is the bad smelling stuff that, you know, you want the open garage uh, or the open shop that'll, that'll kick your butt. I cheat a little bit when it comes to this stuff. It's not as strong. It's not as good. But it does the job because it makes a shell. But it's the easiest thing on the planet to do. And what all I do is take five-minute epoxy. I take five-minute epoxy, and I mix it together, and I got five minutes, and I just paint it on there. It's the same thing as fiberglassing. It's just not as oh. as solid. You know, it's not a permanent – I mean, it's permanent, but it's not this hard shell uh, – fiberglass thing that'll last for a thousand years this is you know depending on your epoxy it's now this nice hard piece but it doesn't matter it's a little more malleable uh you can do what you, you know what i mean you can it's it's more forgiving but it's not this permanent thing that's gonna you know you know what i mean that's gonna be around after the nuclear age um <laughs> But it's just easy. The, the sm there's, you know, the smell. If there is a smell to this stuff, it's not much. But it's just. Can you see this? You can't see that. Let it's, me see. Uh, oh yeah. How can I do this? Here, I'll just put it up here. It's just two parts, two equal parts of uh, of this stuff, and you pour it in. There it is. So it's just two uh, equal parts of this stuff, and I'll take my popsicle stick, mix it all together. And again, the, the, the pot time, the work time on this is not long, because it's five-minute epoxy, and you don't have five minutes. You've got less time than that. So now, if you were away. using the, uh, the resin that comes in the fiberglass kit, how long does that take? Uh, it's up? a lot longer. A lot longer. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? There's, it depends on how much, uh, how much kicker you, uh, how much hardener you put in it. <clears throat> but again, I just, can you see that? All right. I'm just painting this yeah, into yeah. the, painting this into the cloth. And how do you know that you've got good, just, can you see, yeah, you see it. that it's the coverage? Yeah. yeah, you see it. And again, this is the dangerous part because I don't want to get it on the mechanism because it does. If it does, then I'm screwed and I got to take everything apart and et cetera, et cetera, oh, no. et cetera. <laughs> yeah. So Lord X has said back in the AOL chat days, internet trolls were called snerts. S n e r t s. Wow, how do we not yeah. know that? I don't know, but that 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 could be a basis for something. You, you know his name. That's really funny. Back in the AOL days, I still have an AOL address. You and I think you and I are the only, the last, we're the holdouts. My daughters do. <laughs> well, I never had to send that email that says, hey, by the way, everyone I know, <laughs> I'm changing my email address for no good reason. Right. And, and, and did you know I was one of the first 50,000 subscribers to AOL? Wow. Wait, did, did you come off of like CompuServe? And no, AOL no. Or? It was my first internet address. And I wow. remember sitting around in the hotel room with my opening act, uh, Gary Bratwell, been a friend for years. And we were talking about this thing called the internet. And he said, it's amazing. You can find anything. I'm like, really? He goes, yeah. He goes, I said, all right, what about my favorite toy from when I was a kid? And I thought, what was my favorite toy? And I'd looked for these things for years and never found them. And I said, Captain Action was my favorite toy when I was six years old. It was an action. It was, it was Hasbro's answer to, um, <clears throat> to uh, Mattel. Mattel? Yeah, Mattel's uh, uh, G.I. Joe. Wait, is that right, Mattel? Has, or Hasbro. Hasbro. I don't remember. Wait, Hasbro did G.I. Joe? Uh, I don't know. Don't I'm getting everything mixed up. I'm getting everything mixed Me up. Too. 
Anyway, so uh, it was an action figure named Captain Action that was one guy with a sword and a ray gun, and then you could buy every other superhero costume imaginable for this guy. How they did the licensing on that, I don't know. Superman, Batman, uh, Captain America, the Lone Ranger, Tonto, Captain Fury, uh, all these things. So I looked it up, and there it was. There was a website for Captain Action. <laughs> Wow. So, yeah. When it was dial-up, you know, it was dial-up. Those, those were the bad old days. Oh, man. Dude, I, I remember I remember getting a Performa Macintosh and telling my parents, I don't think I could ever use a computer faster than this. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's yep. like. Yep. Yep. It was like Bill Gates. And that, that's, that's back in the days when he said no one will ever need more than 128K of RAM or something like that. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Oh, yep. my gosh. Mm-hmm. Well, just so you know. Uh, you'll feel really good about our. We can feel good about ourselves. There are plenty of people that are uh, on this thread that still have AOL accounts. That's so. We're great. not the only ones. That's so great. <laughs> I love it. All right. So Matt, I've now covered this thing in five minute epoxy, and I will test the mechanism in a second to make sure that nothing flowed through. But I'm painting it up onto the wood just a little bit, so I can sand it and feather it. And make it all look good. Oh yeah, and I can see how it's like created literally a glaze. Right, and and again, this is five minute epoxy. It's not it's not fiberglass resin. Resin. It's not the same thing. Right. <clears throat> but it's the same idea. You've got a hard, and this stuff is now already getting hard, so I can't do any more with it. All right, does he still work? Woohoo! He still works. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Patty Stomper wants to know: Have you written any jokes for him yet? Uh, well, of course, you know, and, but also, I, Matt, as you and I have discussed, hold on, I'm going to wipe some uh, epoxy with my bare fingers. Where's oh, my, no. hold on, let me get the paper towel. There goes your whole weekend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here it is. <clears throat> um, yeah, and, and this is going to be personality and acting driven because, you know, I talk about this all the time. It's it's like there are joke jokes and then there is situation, con, you know, from conflict and uh, uh, it's situational comedy, and that's the kind of, wow, this stuff is, whoa, if I touch the bottom of this right here, I would burn my hand off. I can't touch the bottom of that. Hot, hot, hot. Do I have a heat gun? I could touch, the, check the temperature. Yeah, it's like, it's got to be, it's well, it's, it's got to be easy 150 degrees right now. Holy moly. Hardening, yeah. Anyway, so um, conflict and tension is uh, how you make comedy. And I have learned that more and more throughout the years. And I think people who've ever seen my show, you know there's a relationship between me and the characters. And uh, uh, that's where a lot of comedy comes from. So uh, this guy, there's going to be a lot of conflict in there because he's going to be like, you know, so many other people are dealing with now that how many times do these things get in the way of relationships, you know? Where people yep. are texting too much, they're on the phone too much, it ruins family stuff, it ruins family time, parents are complaining, kids complain about their parents. It's everybody, everybody. And then you're, you you feel justified. I'm at the dinner table, it'll take me just a second. Put the phone down. So I, I just think there's a lot of there's a lot of behavior that goes on that can be turned into comedy. And that's where I'm hoping where the material will come from. The attitude, the acting, the situations. So there you go. All right. So this is now hardening. Like I said, fi- five minute. Yep. It's getting uh, really tacky and almost done. So that was easy. And again, Matt, what I'll go yeah, do, quick. what I'll go, what I'll do now is I will go back and sand uh, the the, gla- the glaze. Oh, I touched it. The, uh, it's close. The glaze is now uh, the five minute epoxy. And it's uh, now formed. I have a lovely little shell there. Again, it's not rock hard. It's not real fiberglass resin, but it's epoxy resin in a weave, which will maintain the shape. It'll stay there forever. It's not supporting anything. It's just decoration. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll take this, sh- sand this down. I will uh, then use uh, uh, either uh, some two-part epoxy putty or uh plastic wood and I will feather these two pieces together make it look like a continued arm Uh, then I will paint it I'll put the same color paint of course all the same paint I'll put texture blend it all together you won't be able to tell the difference Uh, and that way he can wear sleeves that come down only to here and there he is (laughs) 
<laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. And I go and I'll go back and again paint the hands and do some detail with the painting the veins and uh, uh, some shadowing in here and, and make it look like uh, real hands. And again, I love the sound. I know it's not real, not real texting sound, but Matt, I, I think that will end up being just funny as hell in the in the video in the in the show. Yeah, it's a great audio cue. Now, and I saw this question earlier. Are you going to try to make any other kind of noises along with the phone? Well, I, I do think it's funny if he gets a text. There's got to be like a texting a texting alert sound. Yeah, and it's got to be a legit electronic noise. I don't know what that is. I don't know how I'll do it. But um, I, I do think it'd be really funny if, um, bing, whatever it is, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> he just interrupts, you know, it just interrupts mid sentence. <clears throat> yeah, you're in the middle of saying something to him, and then, yeah, that sound. And I don't want to give away the earbud thing, but I will anyway. The earbud thing, Matt, kills me, and, I, and I'm, I'm on the fence with it, but I think it'll be funny. But if he does have those ear things on, You've seen somebody talking to you when they get a call or something. They just glaze over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you think there's something wrong with them, and they're listening to a call. I, I, I think that's funny as well. Rob Cruz suggests that sound should be the old Mac duck sound. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny. <clears throat> did I tell you, Matt, did I tell you what I do in my free time uh, now in the, uh -oh. I haven't told you this. So I'm a collector. I'm a terrible collector. I just uh, collect things. Oh, oh no, this is a great way to end this video. Hold on. I can't believe it. I just ordered these things. <laughs> what is that? I found it in my pocket. I just got them yesterday. They came from, <gasps> they came, <laughs> you I know remember those. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So yeah. I, I just ordered these things from like Czechoslovakia or somewhere, and, and I ordered them. And uh, I have this guy that I have had on my workbench since the beginning of time. Look at this guy. I remember. Yeah. Oh, look at that guy. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's, he's covered in dust. I just licked my finger. You know, can't lick your finger in this. In yeah, you, you're lucky your thumb isn't stuck to your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there's that guy. And uh, again, I have had him forever. This wow. is how we'll end this video. He's been sitting on my workbench. On, on those, the, I have had these drawers here with parts, these parts drawers for uh, since college. This has been the same one. It used to have model helicopter parts. Now it's just parts for building dummies and stuff around the house. But I had this guy, I don't know, he's been in my toolbox. He's been on my workbench. He's followed me from college to moving out here. And I, you know, I ran out of these cigarettes way back when but I found these on the internet, and I'm like, oh, come on. So we have to see if this works, Matt. That's hilarious. I totally, totally remember it. And the fact that the, you had to get those from Czechoslovakia, like, <laughs> did they just introduce that toy in Czechoslovakia? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. New this year. Yeah, Smoking exactly. monkey toy. All right, so for those of you who don't know what this is, so you just put it, is it, yeah. Okay, hold on. Let me see the instructions. Hold on. Okay, so first you insert the novelty cigarette into the mouth. Light cigarette with match or lighter until flame appears. Blow it out. Yeah. So you know what he does, right, Matt? Oh, I, I've never actually seen it work. Really? I, I just, well, I just remember them being advertised, but I've never been around. I've never seen one in, like... Person. Yeah, I don't have I don't have the smoking monkey. I, I and I always thought this guy was funnier than the smoking monkey. I don't know why. It's not nice to make monkey sm monkey smoke. All right. Oh, right, right. Hold on. I know I have a lighter around here somewhere. I have many lighters. This is this is my personal favorite right here. Oh, that's great. Hold on. You've just been flagged by YouTube. You realize that, yeah. right? Oh, and it still works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There it is. You got to hear it though. Yeah, it's great. All right. Let's see if we can get this to work. Oh, I, I lit it too too hot. Okay, here he goes. Oh. Oh. Yep, there it is. I think that was it. Yeah. Wait, can I put a background behind it? There. Can you see it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it really a ring, though? Yeah. If Well, there's wind in the garage. Yeah, I see it blowing. Yeah, but it actually blows smoke rings. He's about to okay. drip He's about to drip ashes on my fingers that don't burn. Look at that. 
That's cool. So my question is, how does that work? Is just like spaced out little bits of? I have gun? no idea, Matt. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> what is this magic? <laughs> and in the fifties, you could watch this for for hours. Of course. Well, I'll, I'll be out here during the boys' nap today. It's really <laughs> watching your, really funny. Your little guy smoke. Yep. That's hilarious. Okay, here's how strong my fingers are. Ready? Oh, look at that. Oh, uh, no. yeah. All right, I put it out. But that, that's great, just sitting there like that. Ed Milton says, that's the greatest toy ever. <laughs> I can't believe I found that. That's so funny. This is in my pocket because I got him in the mail yesterday. I stuck it in my pocket this morning to walk out of here. All Bernie right. Daniel says, there's a demon in it. <laughs> demon just puffing the smoke out like this. <laughs> right. All right, so here we are. And, uh, yep, this is almost uh, hardened, and uh, it's good. And in a, in, you wow, know, look at that. Yeah. So in a little while, and again, Matt, this is not rock hard. This is just, it's just to hold a shape, to hold the paint, to look good. That's it. You there? Yeah, yeah, my, uh, <laughs> my, my ear pods died. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> All right, I guess that's it for now then. That's great. But thanks everybody for joining us, and I will add, I will do the arm, and next time you, you come back, I'll have that painted and done. And maybe I'll have a shirt on him. I don't know. A short sleeve shirt. We're getting closer. This is taking forever. Oh, Matt, I didn't tell you what I do in my free time. So what I've been doing in my free time here, which is Audrey gets ready. For, we have dinner. We put the boys to bed. We watch TV. And then she gets ready for bed. It takes her about 30 minutes to get ready for bed. So my free time every day is 30 minutes. The only reason I have time now is because she very nicely took the boys and uh, took them inside, did lunch, and put them to bed right now. But, um, oh my gosh, their nap's over with. Holy crap. It's my turn now for the, you know, I, I get a few hours in the morning and she takes care of the boys and I get a few hours in the afternoon and she gets her time and I take care of the boys and then we all get together for dinner. But for the 30 minutes after they've gone to bed and after Audrey's getting ready for bed, that's my hobby time. I've been going back, uh, you know I collect Macintosh computers. Oh yeah. So I've gone back to the laptops of the era when Steve Jobs came back. And he introduced the iMac, which was all the ones in different colors. There were the, you know, they were blue and red and pink. And, and uh, the original ones were uh, blueberry, tangerine, strawberry, grape, and I'm missing one, lime, I think it was. It was a green one, yeah. So I think it was those five colors. And, uh, you know, a few years ago, I bought a bunch of those up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A few. Because we made a chandelier out of them. We got to yeah. show that chandelier sometime. I made a chandelier out of IMAX. My buddy, I designed it, and our buddy uh, Steve Zippel uh, put it together. And uh, a full chandelier with those, those five computers. But I still have a few extra. I also have some of the iBooks, the colored books. Do you remember when the first two they came out were blueberry and tangerine? And yeah, they, they had, were, like, rounded edges. They, they, were all they looked like toilet seats. Yeah, that's exactly right. Right. Yeah. So I've pulled some of those out of the warehouse, and I've started refurbishing those. Just getting new hard drives and making them work and making them get on the Internet. <laughs> oh, wow. Are you having to use your AOL disk? <laughs> Absolutely. And I have a full box display box. I think Jim Ricker gave this to me. It's a full display box of AOL disks uh, with a Harry Potter theme. Oh, wow. AOL was into that. Discs were still around with the first Harry Potter movie. The first Harry Potter was like 2003, was it? Wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, and you know, you can still dial up to AOL. No. With a 56k modem, yes, you can. Oh, how <laughs> torturous is that? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> All right, that's enough goof. Look, we're down to 1.8 thousand. We, we, we were at 6,000. Oh, no, we're still at 5.3. 5, 5. We're still at a boatload of people listening to our ridiculousness. Hey, Yeah, but we're... you know what? Thanks, for everybody, for hanging out. This yeah, awesome. thanks for hanging out. This was fun. And now i got to go take care of the boys for the rest of the afternoon. But yay, uh, I get to. I, I actually love this time with the boys. But, Matt, here's a T-shirt. Uh, this is one of our current T-shirts. <laughs> uh, that's one of my shirt. favorites. Yeah, I love this one. It's great. All right. Any more questions, comments? No, I, just a lot of people suggesting names. We'll have to go through here and uh, right. see, see what we think about the suggestions. Well, for those of you who joined us late, let's do one last little demonstration with this guy. Whatever his name is going to be, we're not sure. He now Carolyn has... Johnson missed the baby news. Oh, the baby news. My daughter, Bree, uh, and her husband, Eric, uh, have the baby. Uh, Bree gave birth this morning at 418. 
uh, which is my birthday, April 18th. I was very happy about that. And uh, baby and mommy and husband are happy. And uh, so uh, great for them. Big little boy, eight pounds, six, 15 ounces, 14 ounces, something like that. 20 inches, yeah. big boy. <clears throat> and anyway, so the point is, this is our new, uh, my new character that's coming along nicely in the shop. He's going to be the internet guy, and uh, this is uh, pretty much what he does right here. Matt, I, mean, I think this, I'm going to have to that slot... That alone, is, he's already alive. That's what's awesome. Well, I'm going to have to slot it a little... I want him to look down a little bit further. Just a little yeah. bit. But <laughs> that's I think great. that's great. <laughs> yeah, don't look over his shoulder while he's texting, Jeff. Really great. <laughs> That's great. So Fred, you're right. Look over his shoulders when he's texting. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's like being at the airport and you see uh -huh. somebody texting. Yeah. Catch a peek at their text. <laughs> yep. Great. All right. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Yeah, this is this is going to be a lot of fun. All right. And all I have to do is practice. Yay. All right, everybody. Thanks again for joining us. And we will see you. I don't know when, Matt. It's just got, it takes me, you know, I have a few minutes every day to work on this thing. That's it. A few minutes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have like two hours every day uh, when Audrey's taking care of the boys that I work but on. But some point stuff. next week, I think, yeah? Yeah, of, of course. Middle of next week, uh, something like that. We'll do, join you again. It'll be further along. Matt, thank you for taking your time. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody, for joining us, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.